what I want to do is start uh, mapping out these teeth. So I've showed you how to get really smooth in your detail areas, but now I want to address the teeth. So you can see that some of this has already started to form itself. This looks very much obviously like a giant jagged sharp tooth that's sitting in the back here. And maybe that's what he's showing when he's got the sinister grin. He's showing that nasty tooth back there. So I also still want to separate the the jaw, the upper jaw from the lower jaw. So I'm going to create this really dark, nice line in there, brush that down. And that's my separation over here as well. So actually over here, I've just contacted the head cast, so I know that it's really close, and that's fine. Let's see here, what do I want to map out? So I'm using kind of what I naturally have here. They're kind of telling me, these happy teeth are telling me where they live. And there's, there is a trick to doing really realistic teeth in a sculpt, and I'll show you. It mainly has to do with the gum line, and a lot of people don't do it the right way or what I perceive to be the right way. So you have one tiny little gnarly tooth way up here. Another big scary tooth this way. Let's just do this. So I'm leaving this gap here for this tooth to come through. And this is another big, gnarly back tooth. You don't want to get bit by that thing. So you can see that's starting to shape up. Something pretty, pretty creepy. I like the space here, so we're going to utilize that space there. Make another tooth. Small tooth that goes right here. And we can layer the teeth, like one's sort of like overlapping another. And again, I think for this, I want some creepy little teeth. So I'm gonna kind of shape the top edge of the teeth. Sculpt a few little small baby teeth in here. And then get back to some big gnarly ones. And this one I want to make shallow. Make this one shallow so that I'll have it won't look so oddly symmetrical. Take out some of this gum line. Okay. So also, follow the edge of the gums. The tooth goes underneath the gums, so you want to basically follow where that tooth would continue underneath the gum line. This is going to be a little bit more subtle because I like this kind of fat gum area here. A lot of times people don't sculpt the, uh, this gum line correctly. The tooth goes underneath the gum, like I said, so you'll have that bulge where the tooth continues underneath your, your gums. That being said, I'm going to take this tool, a small loop tool, and I'm going to redefine where the in between the teeth and the gums meet. Basically like right here. This is also tricky because people have a tendency to screw that up. So basically I round it out and I'll poke in and pull that out. I can 
take a smaller tool and just knock that back down just a little bit. And teeth is something you can spend a lot of time on. There's a lot going on. That's the, that's the focal point of this guy's gonna be this big grin. So you can spend some considerable amount of time making this look right. I'm gonna quickly brush it down to give us the idea, but during the time between now and when we mold this thing, I'm gonna revisit this thing and really just tool, tool the sculpture a lot. Also on the detail of a single, of a single tool, or excuse me, a single tooth. This is sort of a big monster fang, so I want to give it a crease like we would for a big monster tooth. So it's not just completely round and unnatural looking. Has a little bit of shape. Do this for claws and fingernails, claws, teeth. I'm still going to keep in mind that this I want to cast up as one solid piece of latex. So I have to be mindful of the, the undercuts when I'm doing some of the sculpture, but right now we're still, we're gonna pull this from latex, it'll be fine. Also, this back ridge back here. You can also, you know, keep in mind that when you're painting this thing, you can start using some really dark colors and really accent these creases. So you give the illusion that they're deeper than they sculpturally are. Do that with just a touch of black. I don't, I don't like to generally airbrush with a lot of black. I think it looks very masky. You want, I want this to look more like a, a makeup from a film than a Halloween mask, but we're doing it like a Halloween mask. So yours will look better than everybody else's.